creative living. Utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world. With your host, Cheryl Borden. Thanks for joining me today for Creative Living. We're going to learn how kale can help your vision and demonstrate how to make delicious chili rellenos. One of my guests today is Dr. Edward Kondrat, and he's the world's leading ophthalmologist and board-certified homeopathic physician. Dr. Kondrat says that a nutritious diet can lead to better eyesight. He'll discuss the five essential foods to incorporate into your diet, one of which is kale. He is an author and the founder of Healing the Eye and Wellness Center in Dade City, Florida. My first guest today is John Valerson, more commonly known as Chef Johnny V. John's going to show how to roast and peel green chilies and then transform them into delicious batter wrapped chili rellenos stuffed with cheddar cheese. He's the owner of Las Cosas Cooking School in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Johnny, it's nice to have you here. Tell me about some of the classes you teach in your cooking school. You know, Cheryl, this year we are celebrating our 12th anniversary at the Las Cosas Cooking School in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I've been running it and coming up with our schedule for 12 years. I don't wow. know how we keep coming up with new topics. We do all different ethnic cuisines, uh, Vietnamese, Thai, uh, Korean, French, Italian, of course. Uh, and as, as well as a lot of New Mexico dishes, which we do get visitors, of course, that like to come and learn how to cook our wonderful New Mexico cuisine. And actually, our recipe today are chili rellenos, which is absolutely mm. something people are curious about. And they seem learning. like they'd be too hard to make. You know, and, and it's tricky. And I think you, people have them in restaurants and they're like, oh, I could never, never do that. But really, it's a very simple. You make a batter, you roast your chilies, which I'll show you in a minute. And basically, uh, it's like frying anything. And if your oil is the right temperature, food does not need to be greasy. So we... So uh, that's the key to yeah, it right there. Yeah, that is the key. We actually at sea level, you uh, heat your oil to 375, but at, at a high altitude in Santa Fe, we only go to 350. But as long as whatever you put in there really starts bubbling and floats, you are mm -hmm. at the right temperature. A thermometer is the more accurate way. But if it's nice and uh, hot, then you're not going to have greasy food. And of mm -hmm. course, you can you can drain it. Uh -huh. So I thought I'd show you two, two different batters. batters. Okay. So the, a chili relleno, first of all, the word relleno just means stuffed. Oh, so stuffed we, chili. Stuffed mm -hmm. chili. And these are our beautiful New Mexico green chilies, which uh, actually at this time of the year, they also at times of the year come from California. So you may see them listed as Anaheim's. I've seen those. Uh -huh. But during the summer here, or during the season, our green chilies, of course, grow all over our state. World famous. We too. are very famous. Or, and they are too. <laughs> so uh, what we do before we stuff them is we want to get rid of the shiny skin. Now these mm -hmm. I've already roasted and this little gadget is called an asador. It's actually a little griller that works over gas, electric, or even these flat, stop, flat top stoves. Oh, so you can do this inside. You can do this inside. Mm -hmm. You could do it outside on the grill, but think about this. You want to make that happen hot and fast. So get the chilies as close to the heat source as you can so they blister quickly. You can also do them under the broiler, too. Oh, in the oven. In mm -hmm. the oven, and that helps during the winter. And then you can see how they've blistered, and then now they will peel very easily. So by peeling off the skin, what's going to happen is it's going to open up the flavor, first of all, but also facilitate that batter sticking. If oh. I didn't peel them first, the batter would slide right off. It just right slides off. off. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um, don't rinse these underwater, just peel them because when you do rinse them to get rid of the skin, you actually run some of that flavor down the drain. So oh. just peel them and then I drain them on a paper towel and then you can see here what I did is now when you're peeling them, sometimes they do split. Mm -hmm. And if they do, it's not a problem. You can always close up the little tears in the chilies with your batter. Oh. What I did, and I actually use white cheddar in my chili rellenos. Traditionally, mm -hmm. it's probably more of a Mexican cheese. I cut these into little uh, thick matchsticks, and I just slid them into the chili and stuffed them. Now, I didn't even try to seed them. The seeds are all up here at the top, and of course, That's there's a lot the of heat. That's where the heat is. Yeah. Uh -huh. But just avoid eating that last bite. And then by not slitting them open, you have a much better chance of keeping the cheese in there. So oh. this had a little hole here that I just kind of slid a piece of cheese whoops, right down in there. Mm -hmm. 
and then close these up. And as I mentioned, with a couple of the batters, they're thick enough that you can actually it'll actually actually close, close it, up. it up. Okay. So probably my favorite, and maybe the more traditional batter, is a beer batter. Mm -hmm. And once again, when you're cooking with beer, the the alcohol content uh, does cook out. And I'm going to add some interesting spices. This is, this is just flour. That's just flour and actually a little bit of cornstarch oh, mixed okay. together. This is toasted and ground cumin, mm. which is going to give our batter just a little bit of flavor and then some cayenne, cayenne pepper. pepper. I won't mm -hmm. have you smell that. That might get a little sneeze. Scared. And then just some salt. And then you're going to whisk this batter until it's nice and smooth. So I'm whisking in my spices first. So the beer is the liquid that's the beer going is to the form liquid. the batter. And you know, if you don't mm -hmm. want to cook with beer, if you're a little bit concerned, you could actually just use soda water. It's oh. fine. Mm -hmm. Now, some people like a thick batter on the rellenos. I tend to like my batter to be a little thinner, so you see through the chili. So you can or see through to the chili. Oh, you can mm -hmm. add enough beer to make this a little thicker or a little thinner, but that's pretty good. You know, it kind of mm -hmm. looks like... Um, Kind of pancake batter mm -hmm. thickness, okay? So that's the more traditional beer batter. And then this one here is actually a blue corn batter. And blue corn is, uh, you know, the Indians kind of cultivated this wonderful blue corn. has a very nutty flavor. I love the color, color of it. Mm -hmm. And this is almost like making a blue corn pancake batter. So we have flour and blue corn, corn. pinch of sugar, a sure. little bit of mm -hmm. salt, and some baking powder. And I put sugar in my cornbread, yeah, so oh, I yeah. guess that would be kind yeah. of so like gives, doing yeah, the same gives thing. Gives it a little bit. And then we've got our eggs here, and then this is buttermilk. Ooh. So this is going to be a buttermilk uh, blue corn batter. And then we'll add our eggs, just two whole eggs. This one, I would assume, would be a fluffier batter. It's a little bit fluffier, and it's also a little denser, too. More, so mm -hmm. if you do have a, a chili that has gotten a little bit torn, you'll see you this. You can hide it you better. Can kind mm -hmm. of, you can close up those. This is maybe a touch thicker than I would normally do, but I think it'll be fine because I do have those tears in my chili, and I can, I can cover those up. And once again, that's almost like a blue corn pancake mm -hmm. batter. So let's give ourselves some room. Now this is just plain vegetable oil that we've heated up to 350. Mm -hmm. This is a nifty gadget. This is actually called a spider, and it's used in frying to uh, rescue your chilies from the oil. Mm -hmm. So frying is- So you don't is, tear it. Yeah, you don't tear mm -hmm. it. You can drain and get rid of a lot of the oil before you put it on your paper towel. So I can kind of see my oil moving in there. So I think we're at the right temperature. So when you're buying your chilies, think about looking for ones with a stem because that's a good thing to Older. hold on to mm -hmm. when, you're, when you're frying. So I'm going to sort of bathe my chili in this batter. Remember to take out your, oops, I lost a little bit of cheese. Take out your toothpicks before you try to eat it. And then oh, because the, I see the oil those, was just at the right temp. See that bubbling? Uh -huh. That tells me that that oil is at the right temperature. Uh, frying is all about evaporating of moisture. So if I see that bubbling happening, I know that my oil is the right temperature. And as soon as that bubbling basically stops, I'll know that my food is cooked. So I'm kind of giving it a little bit of a... So you could cook probably maybe three at a time three, in here yeah. without and it lowering the yeah, temperature too much. Without it lowering the temperature, you want to make sure that temperature stays the right temp or, you know stays at that mm -hmm. 350. This is actually a wok by a company called Scanpan and it's titanium steel. So really holds the heat in there and makes for mm -hmm. uh, good frying and it's nice and deep. Oh, gonna so try then my little blue, blue corn, corn because this chili is a little torn what I'll do is just sort of cover mm -hmm. this over. That does cover up any Yeah, that you could you could fry you could cover this. Mm -hmm over anything and then I'm going to carefully pull that out and then we'll slide mm -hmm. him in. Now I probably want to flip, we have a little appendage here, oh, <laughs> we just broke him off there. Oh that's getting to be a nice Isn't golden that beautiful? color And that's now. what you're looking for, that nice golden color. Uh, make sure if you do do three or four at a time, make sure that oil does come back to temperature and then look at how beautiful that is. Mm. And I see what we'll you mean. Let, you can see the chili just you can still a little bit through there. And that's uh -huh. what I like. I don't like to just be eating. Um, and sometimes I know I've ordered chili rellenos in the, in, at a restaurant. Yeah. And it's all 
it's like this huge There's thick no thing. chili in yeah. there. Yeah, and you can't tell what you're eating. Uh -huh. And now this is just a New Mexico red chili sauce. I do have a recipe in my cookbook here, and everybody's got their own version. But we whip this up. It's got actually uh, red chilies, garlic, cumin, and Mexican oregano. And rather than pour the um, sauce over my relleno, I like to do it on the plate and oh. then let let sort you of dip, dip it into, into it, it. Uh -huh. and then you sort of see and taste your relleno. You're not just getting it's not uh, being the smothered. Sauce. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I'm just going to put some of this on my plate here. Oh. This is little bit down. And in, in, re in the restaurant, is this how you'd ser you serve it? Yeah, uh -huh. and, in, and yeah, I would do it with the sauce on the bottom oh, here. Oh, I hadn't thought about doing that. And then I'm just going to tidy up my plate a little bit here. You know, we always, this is what the chef's job the really secrets. is. Yeah. Uh -huh. The chef in the restaurant is really just out there with a clean towel. <laughs> okay. Hopefully, hopefully a clean towel, right? So I'll just put that on the bottom and then you'll see and look at, see our bubbles have mm -hmm. sort of slowed down, and that way I know that's the, that's the, that looks like a corn dog from the state it, fair. It's big. That's a little bit thick. <laughs> and so to plate these, we'll do our little sauce, and then we can still do our... Just lay it on top. Lay it on top. Mm -hmm. Remember, we get to pull those toothpicks out. Uh-huh. And then I might do a little squirt of sour cream on top, make it pretty. Mm-hmm. And and what is just, that? That's some fresh cilantro, which mm. goes so well with it. It's and beautiful. And so that's our chili reina with the with the uh, beer batter, and then here is our big daddy blue corn the batter. The blue corn. Uh huh. Now I can strain this oil and reuse it. Put it through a strainer, let it cool, pop it in the fridge, and then as long as you haven't cooked anything too fishy or strong flavored in there, you can, you can reuse it. Reuse mm -hmm. it, and that's just plain vegetable oil. Uh, might even be peanut oil, but just a plain vegetable oil, and then you will knock the socks off anybody, especially when really they come to visit them. New Mexico. Uh -huh. Well, thank you so much. I know that this is one of the most popular classes, and it's nice to see some of the tips and the tricks that yeah. you teach there. Thank like you, Johnny. i to share those. Thanks. Dr. Kondrat, thank you so much for being here today. I love the fact that you believe that we can actually eat our way to better vision. Uh, I, I think that's so important. The, the, the things that we eat are important to all aspects of our body, but I'll have to admit I hadn't thought too much about it except we know we should eat carrots. Our mothers have always told us that. But you really practice that and teach that at your center for the vision, don't you? Yeah, I think it was Edison that said that the doctors of the future will be advising patients on diet and the food to eat. I think God gave us in each individual plant, fruit and vegetable, the essentials to help us live a healthy life. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately we're ignoring those natural fruits and vegetables and eating more synthetic mm -hmm. processed foods. Well, it's, I think it's certainly true. Uh, I've seen this eye visual at my optometrist office, but we thought it might be interesting. Mm -hmm. Maybe explain to us the parts of the eye and mm -hmm. what things affect which part. Okay, this is an eyeball, and the eye is covered with a tough fibrous coat called a sclera. It's a protective uh -huh. coat. Now, and inside the eye, we'll start with the front part of the eye. This is the cornea or the window of the eye. And uh, often uh, people will get dry eyes and uh -huh. irritation. So this is very sensitive. And I've heard of structure. scratching the cornea, scratching maybe the accidents cornea. or something. So blinking mm -hmm. frequently, uh, eating a lot of uh, fresh fruits and vegetables. Omega oils will help keep those tears uh, more have, have a more lubricating effect to keep uh -huh. the eye comfortable. Uh -huh. Then inside we have the iris, which is the colored part of the eye, oh. uh -huh. and then behind the iris is the lens. When the lens becomes clotty, this is called a cataract. Mm -hmm. Then we move into the eye, and this is kind of like the working machine of the eye, the retina. Mm -hmm. This is like the film of the camera. We can see uh, there are about 100 million rod, rods and cones in the eye, and each one receive light and take that information into the brain oh. through the optic nerve. This is it. Uh -huh. So one part, uh, or a common disease that I see is macular degeneration. There's one part in the retina that has a high concentration of cones for good sharp vision, and this tends to degenerate as we get older. That's called macular degeneration, mm -hmm. where you lose your central vision. Another problem we see is pressure building up inside the eye. 
oh. and it causes damage to the optic nerve. What causes nerve. that pressure? Well, uh, probably much like when you're draining the bathtub, when you get lint and it becomes uh -huh. clogged, the water Clogs starts it. to accumulate. Uh -huh. Well, the eye is constantly making a fluid called aqueous. Oh. So when the eye flow becomes blocked, the pressure builds up. Mm -hmm. So all of these diseases that I see, we treat them in a common way. First step is to clean up your diet to make sure you have the natural building blocks for your body to heal itself. The second thing we do is we always like to evaluate you for existing toxins. Many people have elevated lead or mercury or other. Is that uh, through blood test to, de to determine well, these? The best way how? is a challenge test. I could check oh. your lead levels right now by checking your urine or blood and they're going to be normal. You could be dying of lead poisoning and it'll be normal because the oh. lead goes into your bone, your eye, your muscles. So we have to give you an agent to free the lead, then we measure it. It's called uh -huh. a chelating agent. So mm -hmm. typically, I have patients take some of these pills, makes the lead soluble, then we have them collect their urine for a six hour time period, uh -huh. and then we measure the lead. That's probably the most oh. effective way. Is this what leads to that chelation therapy that some people do? Is that yeah, the chelation therapy is a wonderful therapy, not only for removing heavy metals, but improving blood flow. Oh. Uh, there was a recent study done, the TACT, T-A-C-T, Trial to Assess Chelation Therapy. Uh -huh. It was a major government study that conclusively showed that people that undergo chelation therapy have a 28% lower incidence of having a cardiac event. Wow, Heart that's attack, significant. Uh, stroke, mm -hmm. chest pain, mm -hmm. et cetera. 28%. 28. Mm -hmm. So I believe chelation is an essential treatment uh -huh. for people with eye problems, especially if your lead or mercury is elevated. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Going back to the, the foods and things, uh, I understand after, from reading your book that there are five, I guess we could say, superfoods that we need to incorporate in our diet, and I'd like to know why they're so good. Some I've eaten, some I've not. What about butternut squash? Why is that so good for us? Well, I like people to look at the fruits and vegetables in terms of color. Mm -hmm. Every color gives you a, a unique bioflavonoid, if you uh -huh. will. Uh, for example those yellow peppers there, uh -huh. unique bioflavonoid, the red peppers, the green apples. So look at food in terms of color. Mm -hmm. um, a rainbow diet. Yeah. Colorful food will give you colorful vision. So put color into your body and your vision will be much more mm -hmm. colorful. Well, and like zucchini and uh, Brussels sprouts are deep green vegetables, so mm -hmm. that goes along mm -hmm. with, uh, uh, of course, you have samples mm -hmm. of those there. Uh, blueberries. Uh, blueberries have uh, an essential ingredient to improve the function of the retina. Oh. Uh, these is a certain type of bioflavonoid, and it's interesting, the, uh, during World War II, the British fighter pilots would load up on blueberries to improve their night vision. Oh, uh -huh. So blueberries are really excellent, but my favorite is kale. Kale. And the reason for that is it has one of the highest concentrations of lutein. And lutein is essential for a good function of the macula. In fact, the center part of the macula is called the macula lutea. Lutea means yellow. Oh. And lutein has that yellow, yellow bioflavonoid that the eye desperately needs. Mm -hmm. But if we perhaps are not doing as well as we should, um, eating a colorful diet, can we take supplements and make up for it? Well, the first line of attack is a good diet. I hate when people are using vitamins as the main line mm -hmm. of defense. Uh -huh. I think you need a good, healthy diet and then use the vitamins as a supplement to boost your nutritional levels. And unfortunately here in the United States, because our diets are so poor, it's hard at times to get organic foods, people travel, uh, and we compromise our diet, you need to take a good nutritional supplement. So, supplement's the key word. It should supplement, supplement our diet. Mm -hmm. it, it seems to me like it would be much easier to tell people what they should eat and what they should start having in their diet. How do you tell them, if they're, especially if they're not being honest on their food diary, how do you bring out some of the points about things that they shouldn't eat or things that they shouldn't do mm. that go against That's their That's actually eyes? pretty easy. If it has a label on it, you probably shouldn't eat it. <laughs> oh, that's it's interesting. interesting. When you go shopping in a grocery store, in the periphery of the store, mm -hmm. that's all the items that don't have a label. They're fresh, they're perishable. Uh -huh. As you go more towards the center, uh -huh. 
the amount of preservatives the canned goes goods. up. Uh -huh. So oh. avoid anything with a label, so it's kind of simple. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was easy to do. Yeah. And you do take a homeopathic look at this, and, and what I like is that you, you do not, even though you're a surgeon by training, you're an eye surgeon, you really suggest that people take a different approach to it and not just immediately jump into uh, various types of surgeries on our eyes. No, I think that's really important to look at why you're developing the particular issue, whether it's a cataract or macular uh -huh. degeneration, address the underlying problem. And in most cases, when you address the underlying problem, your vision will improve and you're not going to need surgery. So conditions can be reversed then? Absolutely. Not just um, Absolutely. kept at a level. They can actually be reversed. Yeah, maybe 30 years ago when I was an eye surgeon, I would tell patients, forget it. Uh -huh. You got a problem. We have to remove it. Uh -huh. But now I've changed my opinion that serious eye problems can be reversed. And I'm not talking mm. about reversing it to 2020 uh, or getting back to uh -huh. your eyes that you had when you were 20 years of age. I'm talking about improving your vision so you can function better, enjoy your life, and not need yeah. these aggressive and, that's what and we're unnecessary really, operations. Mm -hmm. That's what we really all strive for. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, do you, what all is incorporated in the Chondrot program? Well, the Chondrot program is a three-day program uh, the first day you have a very thorough evaluation. We want to know exactly what's going on, not only with your eye, but with your physical body, contributing factors that mm -hmm. may be uh, affecting your eyes. So you're, a, you're working on their whole body, not the just body. the eye or the, the vision. Whole body. Mm -hmm. And then after we do that initial evaluation, we then begin treatments. And the treatments consist of primarily looking at your diet, nutritional IVs to bring up your mm -hmm. nutritional level, then we do a lot of therapies to stimulate your eye to heal. My favorite is microcurrent. This is a low level electrical current which stimulates and improves the circulation, stimulates healing. There was a study done looking at ATP production in the eye. ATP is kind of get like the gasoline of the cell. Oh. And this study showed that low levels of microcurrent can improve cellular function, ATP production, by as much as 500%, if you Good can believe that. Uh -huh. So we're taking dysfunctional cells, cells mm -hmm. that aren't healthy, mm -hmm. and we're bringing them back to life. Mm -hmm. But it's more than the microcurrent because you need that nutritional foundation. You need the gasoline, the fuel, so these cells will Make run. it work. I thought it was interesting when I, and the, the book that I'm reading currently is The Ten Essentials to Save Your Sight. This book actually took about 10 years to, to pull together you interviewed lots of people, you covered lots of different topics in there. Maybe tell us a little bit about the process mm -hmm. you well, went through. Well, the book through. was based on lectures that I've given over 10 years. Uh -huh. So I enjoy oh. getting together with a group of folks and telling them things they have to do to improve their vision uh -huh. and answering their questions. So yeah. over the 10 years, uh, these talks have evaluated, covering more detail, finding out what people really need to know. Uh -huh. So I've kind of structured the book with 10 chapters. Mm -hmm. First chapter is the most important, which you already know uh -huh. is your diet and nutrition. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we move on to like hydration, reducing stress, exercise. And towards the end of the book, we talk about many of these specialized therapies uh -huh. that I do in my practice. Like the like microcurrent. microcurrent, the uh -huh. light therapy, uh -huh. uh, nutritional IVs. So I wanted to write a book that folks could pick it up and begin to take some positive changes on their own. And then if that's not effective, then see a specialist uh -huh. like myself or another alternative doctor and mm -hmm. begin some of these other therapies that I talk about. Well, it's very interesting. It's easy to read because it's something that I think everyone can relate to. Well, I really appreciate you coming today. Thanks for sharing so much of your findings with us. And thanks so much for having me. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how to feed our kids more nutritious meals and we'll talk about aromatic skin care. One of my next guests is a registered dietitian and author, and she knows that feeding your children right may seem to be one of life's greatest challenges, but she's going to share some of her secrets to make it easier than you might think. She's a part of the Eat Smart, Play Safe program, which is designed for parents and kids and offers good nutrition information and sports safety for kids on and off the field.
Another guest is an aromatic alchemist and natural perfumer. She's going to explain what essential oils and base oils are and tell why they're ideal for various skin types. When applied topically or used to scent your personal space, oils can affect the physical and mental body, invoke deeper spiritual awareness, and also be effective for aesthetic purposes. My guest will show how to use them for a beautiful glowing appearance. Both of these topics will be featured on the next Creative Living Show. If you ever have comments or suggestions or ideas for shows, you can email me at cheryl.borden at enmu.edu. I'd also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com and in the search window type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much and I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We are very pleased to offer a new booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. This booklet is titled the 6800 series and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information. And it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet or just the segments you're most interested in. For your copy of this new booklet, go to our website at KENW.org and then click on Creative Living. Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on the booklet or on any of the other booklets we have available online. We'd also like to invite you to sign up for our free e-newsletter. Just go to KENW.org and click on the Sign Up Now button and input your email address. Thank you.